Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this one is a video that's going to give you guys some insight into One Hive Genesis, One Hive Alpha, the whole uh, One Hive family, and talk about what it means to be a part of the clan and how you guys can join if you're interested, because we want to get some information out there in case you guys have been looking for a new clan, looking for a high-level war clan, something along those lines. Uh, we're going to give you guys some information here. But I am not alone. I have a co-leader of One Hive Genesis, none other than Smog. What's up, Smog? Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me on, uh, Bisex. Uh, pleasure to be here with you. Uh, hopefully we can get in some real, into the real meat and drink of uh, what it means to play in One Hive Genesis. Now, Smog, I believe you made your debut in the last Live with One Hive video. You were that one guy in the background doing Devin's attack. Oh, yeah, I was that annoying, annoying chap kind of backseat driving in the <laughs> attack. But well, yeah, it was a slow roller, so he didn't need too much encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Um, so anyway, we're just going to dive into it. Um, we'll start with some of the uh, clan background information to give you guys a taste of that. So um, Smog, why don't you take it away with how did One Hive Genesis form? Why did it form? And kind of what was the initial purpose of it? So One Hive Genesis was initially a feeder clan to... Uh, one Hive and One Hive 2.0, and um, we we were a Town Hall 8 clan as well. That was a, kind of our speciality. So any of you who were following Jake at the time will remember he did Elite Eight, and that was that was our kind of speciality. And we also housed all the Town Hall Nine and Ten recruits. Uh, so that that's kind of how how Genesis started. Okay, and how did it? develop um were there any key moments in its history anything like that well uh, eventually uh, 2.0 ended up spitting off from from 1.0 so we became kind of aligned with 1.0 we were kind of a, their direct feeder but as we grew we got players who kind of wanted to stay in genesis all the town hall eight started to upgrade uh, kind of the meta of the game shifted to those higher levels uh, you know, especially as town hall 11 came out so, so we started to kind of become our, become our own clan and start to arrange wars with other clans by ourselves because initially we were just uh, feeding players to 1.0 for their big wars. Um, but our, our first big war back in the day was against Clashheads T7, and they're the, the kind of Town Hall 8 subsidiary to uh, the main Clashheads squad. So our first big war was against them, and... Uh, Oh, that was that was a crazy one. We we ended up we ended up tying. It was a Town Hall eight and Town Hall nine war, but they just managed to clear us with the last attack, uh, and we had a couple couple remaining. So we actually we, we kind of edged them out. So have you been in Genesis Genesis since the beginning? Uh, not quite the beginning. Um, I'm, I don't think there's anyone around now that has been in Genesis since the beginning. So. I think I think I'm the the longest standing member, but I came in probably a couple of months uh, after its inception. Okay, I see. So eventually, uh, of course, Genesis broke apart. I actually was uh, I joined One Hive Genesis with the initial intent of joining the main One Hive clan. That's what I applied for, and I got yeah. put in Genesis as a tryout. And I remember people saying. Uh, be careful. A lot of times you don't want to leave once you come to Genesis and I didn't believe it, but here I am, I don't know, two years. I don't know how long it's been. I think yeah, that's it's been a crazy amount of time, hasn't it? Yeah. I'm probably one of the longest members. Um, not as quite, quite as long as you, but I'm probably up there. Um, you certainly are. So, so yeah. And I guess eventually it, it broke apart. There were some differences with 1.0 and we kind of developed into our own family, uh, of clans, including One Hive Genesis, One Hive Alpha, and our kind of feeder clan, One Hive Trinity. So talk about the entrance of One Hive Genesis into the competitive war scene on its own. So, yeah, we we were involved in the, the FPC back in the day, the Fair Play community, which was a bunch of clans who were, uh, well, their goal was to just arrange wars with like-minded opponents uh, so we got involved with that, and we started facing clans kind of across the community. Uh, we actually 
we were one of the clans who first faced Dark Looters when they were coming onto the scene, and everyone wasn't really sure what to make of them back then. And uh, obviously now, um, knowing what they've what they've done in the game, uh, yeah, that that was kind of how we how we got into that. And then from there, uh, we we've always been looking for that kind of next level competition. And that was when the the CWL broke, and we were involved in uh, the CWL season one. Uh, with a host of other clans so we back then i guess i think it was only one league i can't i can't I remember exactly. right. i think it was one league yeah yeah so we were involved in the top league but uh the season was cut short for us unfortunately and um, yeah it was it was just bad news i think we managed three weeks so like that we got we got at least one win under our belt uh but we had we had a member using third-party applications. We, I think we were the first clan to actually catch a clan-wide uh, kind of ban from Supercell, the two-week bans uh, they, they've been known to hand out. So that was that was the end of our season one. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Um, we had uh, quite a few um, members leave at that point, but the core group kind of stayed, um, which was important, and we just kind of rebuilt from there. So um, eventually... Season two, uh, which pretty recently just ended, how did we do in that? Well, we had we had a difficult season, I would say. I mean, it was to get into season two in the first place, especially in the uh, the Premier League or the Premier League or however, however you uh, you would say it. <laughs> I know you have a different pronunciation to me, uh, but yeah, we got uh, we we managed to get into that. Uh, we we did some good rebuilding. Uh, and then, yeah, we we managed, we eked out a few wins uh, in that in that league. We had a lot of close battles that could have gone either way, we, and we didn't quite get to the level that we wanted to, which was disappointing for us. So uh, this season, we're we're really looking to build on that. Uh, we we really want to get some some good uh, momentum moving through the season. So we got a big big week, big first week next weekend. Yeah, absolutely, with Season 3 knocking on the door next weekend. But yeah, Season 2, um, that was an interesting season because there were so many wars that we just lost by like one star or we lost on percentage, and it always came down to the end of the war. I think we've improved our 10v10 a lot because that kind of haunted us for a while. Yes, sir. But I'd say we're probably one of the, the better 10v10 clans uh, in our league now, if I'm going to try to speak a little bit ahead of time. Maybe I'll end up eating my words. Oh, Who knows? Yeah, put in a market down there, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, so anyway, um, I actually, due to a few forfeits and some weird stuff going on, we actually made it to the playoffs because um, we eked by with, I think, a about a 500 record, just about. Um, and we went up against the one seed, FYSB, and we actually had a close 80-80 war they won on percentage, but um, a few dip fails at the end, we easily could have won that war. Um, so that was an exciting moment, and I think it was kind of encouraging that we were right there with one of the top clans. Yeah, I mean, the main thing going into Season 3 is we know we can re reach the levels we want to, but we just need to get that uh, consistency moving. Uh, and we hope uh, kind of players want to come in and join our clan family and help us with that. Yeah, so just to clarify again, we're in CWL Season 3, the Premier League, which is kind of like the second league. Um, the breakdown is, help me out here, I think it's four Town Hall 11s, 10 Town Hall 10s, and how many Town Hall 9s does that leave? Uh, not quite, I think that's 16. Uh, yeah, 16. sounds right, 16. That, that's a standard breakdown, but again, it, it's flexible, you can add numbers up to a 40 versus 40 war in there as well. So okay. it's a pretty competitive league. I mean, there's a lot, lots of good clans knocking around. There's no kind of real standout uh, clan, kind of like the Dark Looters were in, in the invite. So it's going to be an interesting season. Okay, so that's Genesis. What about the other clans in the family? We have One Hive Alpha, which is um, up and running at the moment, and One Hive Trinity, which is a little bit... Um, almost a little bit retired at the moment, but it's kind of starting to come back. So how are, how are those two clans functioning along with one half Genesis? So to start with Trinity, I guess Trinity is just, it's basically, it's what the old uh, Genesis used to be. So it's a clan for town hall eights. It's kind of, um, it's not really run 
with with much kind of strict guidelines or anything like that. There's not much structure to it at the moment. Uh, so if you've got a town weight or just a low account that you'd like to have fun with, it's a cool place to come and do a few chill wars and just hang out and have fun. And after that, we've got One Hive Alpha, which is our kind of direct feeder clan to Genesis. Uh, at the moment, Alpha's just our kind of training grounds uh, where we bring in players to kind of progress if they're uh, a bit lower in their kind of defensive level upgrades and heroes and whatnot. We can kind of train them, and it's also where we conduct our tryouts for Genesis. Okay, because I'm always surprised to go in and just see some awesome attacks when I visit One Hive Alpha, and it's a great place to record some lower level stuff because, as you get, as you said, um, there's some people that are still developing their heroes and stuff in there, so it gives a little bit of flexibility if you're not quite ready to be in Genesis. One Hive Alpha is a great place to kind of get yourself established and then move up from there. Um, so, so moving on to the next kind of thing I want to discuss here is what type of player are we looking for and what type of requirements are there to be in uh, the One Hive Genesis Alpha Trinity family? So to start with what I'll call our kind of statistical requirements, uh, we're looking at, at the Town Hall 9 level, for Genesis, we're basically looking at maxed accounts. So 30-30 heroes and just a maxed uh, defensive kind of layout. So, you know, all, all the walls and uh, any defensive structure, basically, yeah, maxed out. Because that's what you need for CWL. Um Every Town Hall 9 has those max heroes. I'd say probably the walls are a little bit more flexible. If you have Lego walls, probably yeah, not I mean, going to ruin your chances. Yeah, yeah, there, there are. <laughs> I mean, I, that's just the kind of maximum kind of threshold. Um, but we will allow people with slightly less than that. If you've got, you know, maybe a few hero levels less or something, if you're, you know, an exceptional attacker, there are. Um, we, we can make exceptions. But uh, yeah, if you're if you're anything less than that, uh, alpha requirements are twenty twenty heroes. So as long as you got that, uh, we can work. We, we're looking at kind of uh, balanced offense to defense. Uh, so if you've got a rushed account, you won't have much much of a hope of getting into our clan family at the moment. Uh, so in that case, you should probably go away and, and work on it until you're more balanced. But that is more or less what we're looking for at Town Hall 9. Uh, and at Town Hall 10, uh, it's, it's a different kind of uh, question altogether. Because if, if you're not familiar with the tiering system in the CWL, uh, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of difficult to, uh, to kind of put some Town Hall 10 requirements. We're, we're basically looking at someone who's balanced. It doesn't matter what uh, stage you're at in your Town Hall 10 progression. You can be right at the beginning or towards the end. Uh, but we're looking for your offense and defense to be balanced. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, the heroes are definitely important at Town Hall 10 because I remember I was at like 30, I was at like 40, 35 for so long. And I, every week I would have someone in my uh, DMs saying like, oh, I'm waiting on your heroes. Come on, get them up or something. Um, <laughs> because... Those can make a difference. So yeah, at Town Hall 10, of course, you guys can check out more videos that I've made that other people have made on the uh, tier system. It has been changed. Basically, it's just a way to um, to measure how strong a Town Hall 10 base is using uh, the defenses that are important, such as Inferno Towers, Expos, not counting the mortars or the bomb towers quite as much as Supercell does in the waiting. So it's a more fair way to weigh a Town Hall 10. And we're just looking for accounts that are balanced, that are upgrading their offense at a steady rate and upgrading defenses in kind of a strategic way, not going to, you know, upgrade all their mortars first or something. So um, that's mainly what we're looking for. Town Hall 10 has some flexibility. So, um, yeah. Uh, anything else? Town Hall 11 requirements. What about that? Town Hall 11s, we, we have a lot of Town Hall 11s in the clan at the moment. So, um, I mean, by all means, if you are an 11, still apply. But we're basically looking for maxed accounts and people with a really good attitude and ability. Um, if, if, you're not, if you're not quite maxed, you know, by all means, do, do should apply. 
but there's not there's not much room for Town Hall Eleven players in Genesis currently. But Town Hall Nine and Ten, you know, we have we have still got spots available uh, if you if you were to apply. And as for what kind of uh, well the type of player we're looking for, uh, we want someone with uh, an interest in the competitive scene and elite clash of clans, someone who uh, has experience, ideally has experience in either the CWL or other competitive leagues like the no dip league or the minor league uh, in the, uh, in the game. Uh, we also want someone who enjoys the, the, the game mechanics, enjoys discussing the game, game mechanics, uh, someone who you know, enjoys attacking, but also defending as well. Uh, because we, we do we do a lot of kind of theory crafting and we have a lot of discussion over the best way uh, to defend and build bases in the game. And I know yourself, Bisexual, you have quite a few videos helping out your subscribers on how to build bases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just to kind of add to that, in terms of the experience in One Hive Genesis, um, Discord, we use that, and it's a great communication tool. You can get it on your phone, your computer, um, and we especially on the weekends we have a lot of clan members in the voice chat so if if you do want to get to that next uh level with the being in cwl or being in the competitive wars typically it requires a lot of communication about who to attack and then what type of attack you're going to do what the plan is going to be now this is a question that i actually i think i get a lot um gemming heroes how does that work um should people expect to have to gem their heroes a lot? What's the situation with that? So when you come in on your tryout to, to I guess, alpha, uh, you will be required to have your heroes up for every attack. Uh, so if you're upgrading them, you will need to gem them. Uh, it, it's, you know, we're an elite war clan. You can't have your heroes down for any attack. If you want to uh, progress the levels, you, you will need gems, uh, if you need to take some time out to upgrade your heroes, um, if you if you become a kind of fully fledged member of the clan, we might allow that in the future. But especially when you're on your trial, you need to be giving 100% uh, focus, and you you can't have those heroes down. Yeah, um, of course. If you have max heroes, then uh, you don't have to worry about that. From what I found, I, I when I was upgrading my heroes, I would just farm the dark elixir. Then right after I did my second attack, I'd hit the upgrade button. Then right before I did my attack for the next war, maybe 12, 24 hours later, I would uh, gem it, which, uh, I don't know, cost like 800, 900 gems. So um, if you are in the process of upgrading, that can be a little bit of an issue, but it is required to have your heroes for the attacks, of course, as it is in most uh, clans at this level. So, okay, very good. Um... Let's go into how to apply and a little bit more specific and what the tryout process looks like. So we, you said it already, we operate on Discord, so you will need to have the Discord application downloaded onto your phone, iPad, uh, tablet, whatever you use, uh, computer, I guess, as well. Uh, and we, we, we communicate, plan uh, all through this application. Uh, so we'll have a a link to our discord server in the description of this video uh, i know there's normally one there uh, but i guess we can draw special attention to it i don't know the link off the top of my head uh, but but we'll have that there for you mm -hmm. uh, and then basically once you come come into the server you'll be asked to fill out a short questionnaire uh, which will kind of help us with with your stance and your ability to gem and uh, experience stuff like that and then we'll ask you to post a picture of your uh, base uh, and a picture of your profile and we also ask you to write down your your clan tag so we can have a look at what uh, previous clans you've been in uh, and such like yeah so just getting more information uh through discord and then if everything goes well um some tryout attacks get a you know get a sense of uh the skill level of the player and then just direct them in the appropriate direction whether it's uh, Genesis, Alpha, or hey, you need to wait, work on your heroes, whatever yeah. the situation may be. So I, I, I'd like to draw some importance to the point that uh, we, we're not necessarily looking for people who are going to come in, uh, three-star all their attacks, um, and that's all they do. 
we're looking for more rounded players who are going to uh, contribute uh, to the kind of social life of the clan, contribute actively, contribute in the base building planning uh, realms. We yeah. share a, a server with, uh, you know, all the clans together share a server. So there's plenty of communication that goes on. So we're looking for someone who can also fit in uh, with the community we, we've built in the clan and the family. Okay. That definitely, I'd echo that. Um, anything else you want to say regarding the the clan, the tryout process, anything like that? Uh, so, I guess a final thing on our tryouts: they normally last kind of two between two and four wars, um, after which point you'll either become uh, a fully fledged member, and um, or we we will uh, inform you that your tryout hasn't hasn't been a success. So that's what you should look for when you come into the clan. But yeah, I think that's it. All right, awesome. Now I want to end it on kind of a high note here. Well, maybe a high note. Um, what's the best moment? I'll let you answer first, and I'll give my answer. The best moment you've had being a member in One Hive Genesis. There's been so many good moments. What <laughs> going back to when I was a town hall late, uh, pulling off your your first attack. You know, first real good attack and ending up on Jake's uh, Elite Eight series. That was great fun. A uh, very proud moment. But probably one of the, the greatest moments for me, I've kind of already talked about it in this video, but it was our war against Clash Heads T7 back in the day. And I think I was awake for pretty much the majority of the war. <laughs> Pulled an all-nighter. Uh, the planning wow. was in insane. And... Uh, yeah, everyone was just crazy. Uh, the, you know, the the voice chats that were going on, just everyone was in voice, having a, having a great time, uh, planning out these final attacks. And to come out and kind of uh, beat them in more attacks uh, was huge, um, considering uh, kind of the, I guess, the times and what <laughs> how people considered uh, Clash Ads T7 to be. Um, yeah, we did a great job. That was a, a big moment. Right, because back then Town Hall Nine was much more difficult to three star. So yeah, even yeah, though it was an all Town Hall Nine and Town Hall Eight war, it was it was uh, intense. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a given like today where you see these Need for Speed ten v ten nine versus nine um, wars where you're just trying to clear each other in you know four minutes flat. It was <laughs> it was much harder back then. Yeah. So anyway, my best moment probably, yeah, it's pretty clear to me. Um, most memorable would probably be a better term to use. I was, I think, no longer a tryout. I had become a core member. Um, it was, I was going to, to high school still. Um, I think I was a junior <laughs> at the time. And I... I did one attack at night, but I saved the next one for the morning before school, which is kind of a tricky time slot because school starts at 7.30 for me, and I have to like wake up and drive over. It's pretty yeah. early, yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I woke up, I saw an open Town Hall 9 base, and I just went for it. It was an awesome attack, had like a queen charge from one side, um, king suicide king on the other, then like hogs across the middle. Uh, crush the base and then I check the chat and I remember smog <laughs> smog and this one other guy were just furious because the base had already been called and I was supposed to scout a town hall 10 which I hated doing back then um so I got into this like long dm with smog um of him like <laughs> just digging into me and I was like on my way to school at the time so I'm sitting oh. there <laughs> I'm I was about to kick you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sitting there in calculus um, with my phone just like hidden underneath my calc book, just watching these DMs come in and I'm responding. And then eventually it kind of cools down and we kind of reach like a equilibrium and it's like, okay, I won't do it again. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that, that was just a crazy morning for me. And what was lost in all of it was the, the elegance of the three star, unfortunately. Oh, well, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. But, you know, it's a principle, man. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Um, but yeah, check, that, that check was a long time. 
Man, that was crazy. I'm, I mean, I, I can hardly remember that time. But, uh, you know, you've been a stand-up member ever since. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we end on that note? Um, so thanks so much, Smog, for doing this video, for being a, a co-host here and giving some of your brilliant insight into the clan and the application process. No, thank you, my man. Thank you for getting this out there to all your, your wonderful subscribers and people who watch you religiously. I know there's lots of you out there. So I hope this helps with if you're wanting to apply to the clan and the family. All right. Well, very good. We're going pretty long here, so I'll wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching, and we hope to see you uh, apply to the One Hive Genesis family. If you're interested, if you're looking for a clan, uh, you guys know how to do it now. You guys know all the requirements and what it's going to be like. Any more questions, you can put down in the comments below, and I'll take a look at those, try to answer them to the best I can. But yeah, that'll do it. Thanks for watching, and until next time, both Smog and Bisectatron out. Bye.